California Bomba Genesis, biggest storm in years, kills four. Power cuts hit 150,000 households and sinkholes swallowed cars. Hundreds of homes were evacuated amid fear of mudslides near Los Angeles. More gusts, heavy rain and flash floods are expected on Saturday but the storm is due to subside by Sunday. More than 300 flights have been disrupted at Los Angeles International Airport, and major roads have closed. One man was killed after a tree fell and pulled a power line onto his car in the Sherman Oaks area of Los Angeles. A second person died in a vehicle when it was submerged by a flash flood in the town of Victorville. Another motorist at the same junction was saved after climbing onto the roof of his car. Two others died in car accidents in the San Diego area. Ryan Maui, a meteorologist for Weather Bell Analytics, told the Los Angeles Times that 10 trillion gallons of rain would fall on California in the next week, enough to power Niagara Falls for 154 days. Two cars fell down a sinkhole in LA neighborhood Studio City, with the drama of the second one, teetering on the edge and then tumbling down, shown on live television. Firefighters saved one person from the first car, and the driver got out of the second before it fell. No one was injured. Eric Scott from the Los Angeles Fire Department said that the sinkhole rescue was a very unique and dangerous situation. He said the frightened driver in the fallen car was forced to stand on top of her vehicle, underground and amid rushing water, until a ladder could be passed down to her, 10 feet, 3 meters, below the street. The Los Angeles Times also spoke of surreal scenes with cars trapped by rising waters along freeways 11 and 15. The state's fire department said firefighters had to rescue 15 people from cars trapped in fast-moving water on a road in Sun Valley, and use ropes and inflatable boats to rescue seven people and two dogs from a flood control area on the Los Angeles River. Evacuation orders were issued in the city of Duarte, in the foothills of the San Gabriel Mountains east of Los Angeles, and in parts of Camarillo Springs in Ventura County. It is feared that areas that have been previously hit by forest fires could be more susceptible to mudslides as there is less vegetation to break the flow of running water. Terry Anzer of KFI News told the BBC the dry, scorched ground that had been saturated with the heavy downpour was turning streets into rivers of mud. After five years of drought, a series of storms have filled state reservoirs. In Duarte, about 20 miles, 32 kilometers, east of Los Angeles, City authorities said they had been door-to-door -to, -door to issue mandatory evacuations. Those who chose to stay were required to sign notifications. One local, Alberto Moreno, told Reuters news agency that he was staying put. The neighbors are here so we're all basically going to help out each other if it comes down to it, he said, while barricading his home with sandbags. Meteorologists described the Bomba Genesis as an intense extratropical cyclone at low pressure area, or a weather bomb. The storm looks to be the strongest storm to hit southwest California this season, the National Weather Service said.
It is likely the strongest within the last six years and possibly even as far back as December 2004 or January 1995. Gusts of 87 miles per hour, 140 kilometers per hour, were reported on the Big Sur Scenic Coastal Highway. Earlier in the week, heavy rain and melting snow caused fears of flooding at the tallest dam in the country, Oroville Dam, in Northern California. More than 180,000 residents evacuated their homes, their homes.
This dramatic sandstorm was filmed in Niger in early 2016. Sandstorms wreak death and destruction in many of the world's desert regions. They occur when intensely hot air over the desert causes the lower atmosphere to become unstable, leading to strong winds that stir up vast amounts of loose sand. Sand and dust storms can appear quickly and catch people unprepared. Inhaling small sand and dust particles into the lungs can cause serious respiratory problems. Some people also suffer heart stress and eye infections. Fortunately, forecasters are becoming increasingly skilled at prediction. The Barcelona Dust Forecast Center relies on observations, supercomputers, sophisticated models, and expert meteorologists to provide forecasts of sand and dust storms for Northern Africa, the Middle East, and Europe. It provides forecasts to local and national authorities a full three days in advance. Mineral dust has an important impact on air quality and human health, the environment, and different sectors of the economy. To deal with it, World Meteorological Organization launched the Sun and Dust Storm Warning Advisory and Assessment System with the mission to enhance the ability of countries to deliver to end users dust observations, forecasts, information and knowledge on airborne dust. This system is organized around regional centers. Translating forecasts into actionable and timely warnings for vulnerable and isolated communities, however, can still be a challenge. Greater collaboration among weather, health and emergency agencies is needed at the national level. Many local and national institutions also need more equipment, infrastructure and training. I think the international community should work with national and local uh, organizations to be able to do this work effectively. They may be able, apart from providing the information and making sure they have the information, perhaps also help with training, show them the best examples, how successful countries get this information decimated. The international community can help with resources, can help with training, and can show them the best working models. The Gobi Desert in China and Mongolia also experiences major sand and dust storms. Asian countries collaborated through a regional node operated by the China Meteorological Administration. Shaa 那么增强呢亚洲各国的有关沙尘暴的预报的能力是非常重要的它对于沙尘暴的灾害的防治有着非常重要的作用 Sandstorms do not only affect the people living in or near deserts. Dust kicked out by a desert sandstorm can travel for hundreds or thousands of kilometers, causing respiratory and other problems in faraway countries. Meanwhile, the nature of sandstorms continues to change, posing additional challenges to forecasters. Climate change seems to be increasing the intensity of these storms and altering their regional distribution and frequency. And in many arid regions, land degradation, also known as desertification, is leaving more sand exposed to the wind. In the years ahead, Addressing the evolving challenge of sand and dust storms will require enhanced interagency collaboration and more ambitious international programs for capacity building. It's unconscionable that information that could help the health of the people, information that can help them protect themselves, 
and take measures to prevent the type of respiratory and asthmatic diseases that uh, we are discussing here is not made available to them. And all that it requires is limited resources, not big sums to do that. And I would urge that all measures be taken to get it done. The poor also deserve to protect their health. Ha, 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 ha.